guys, what is going on? Rematch here, and welcome back to the Cards and Castles video. Today, we do actually have another 3K deck for you for the February season. It's about, I would say, eight days toward the end of the season, and about two days ago, I made a push with various other decks. This one that I'm about to show you today actually being the most successful and reaching that 3,000 ranking. We'll show you that right now, of course. it. I named it the good stuff uh, because I really don't have a solid theme. I just kind of threw it out there. It's the good stuff. Um, out of these two factions, but it is Pirate Crusader, so if, you know, the strongest Crusader, if paired with probably the second, probably the second or third best, depending on how highly you view Warlocks, but regardless, we're not going to jump into that sort of debate, let's go ahead and show you guys the deck list that we are running for the Good Stuff deck. So here is, of course, the deck list for what I'm calling the Good Stuff deck for now, and there's just a lot of things that are happening in this deck, so... Let's just start right in, you know, get right into it uh, by looking at the key aspect of this deck, and that being the ramp that you have here. Um, overall, right now, the pirates have slightly been overlooked. There are some people utilizing it, but overall, pirates and their ramp are not being utilized right now in the respect that some think that they should. And by that, I mean there, there's a lot more that could be done with ramp that this deck does. Which people don't see coming, really. You have three copies of the Dread Pirate Robin, of course. Treasure 5 on play. You have the Southport Captain, Treasure 2 instantly. In Those on itself are probably nearly the only ramp in here. Well, besides Mugging, of course, which is at 3. But really, those two are the only ramp you need to make this deck work. And that being because you could just out-ramp your opponent instantly... And create some monsters that are going to just beat down the opponent. And sort of what I mean by that is, what you will you look at the Southport Captain, you play a turn three or turn four, you're instantly going to have next turn five or six gold without a doubt. And with that, you bring out things that are scary, things like Grendel at six seven, Pegacorn at five five, Tyrannosaur at six seven, so on and so forth. So already, Southport Captain's got a nasty ramp to him. And that, of course, like I said, brings out those big guys, which your opponent is dealing with with only four gold at their disposal. So they're already in a tough situation. Um, then you have Robins. Of course, that Dread Pirate actually gets that Treasure 5, which I didn't mention a little bit earlier. But Treasure 5 is another big, big ability here. With Treasure 5 at turn 7, say if you summon him directly when you have 7 gold, you're instantly for that next turn going to be getting 13 gold. And 13 is pretty big. You're going to do a lot with it. Not only can you possibly bring out Craxis, Tyrannosaur, uh, Arbor's Return, all that good stuff, but you could essentially support them with a Dwarven Scope, Blacksmith, Armory in the same turn, creating, again, those monster units that are just going to beat down the opponent. And speaking of support in here, the deck does not lack that whatsoever. We see that with the inclusion of Blacksmith and Armory at 2 of. Not to clog their hand, that's why they're at 2, but even then, the simplest buffs to these guys make, some, make for some devastating effects on the units. You go from Flux 2-4 to a 3-4 with Blacksmith, 3-5 with Armory, Grendel, um, that is 7-8 with the Armory, and it just gets crazier and crazier. Um... We also have more of our early game here, a lot of draw power. You see we have the Forbidden City at three copies. That means we are drawing at least six cards from these. Well, not six cards, not three. That would be nine. A little, little uh, mis miscalculation of math there. But we're drawing at least nine cards from our deck with Forbidden City. And, of course, Lumberjack will give us an extra two. Uh, I chose to keep Lumberjack at 2 and max out Forbidden City. I find more value out of Forbidden City. You're drawing more. It's true that you're discarding one, but that, that this card could be something maybe you don't really need. And with a lot of things being at 3 of in the deck, you're more than likely going to see that card sometime later down the road. Um, so, again, draw power very strong here to keep a good hand as well. That's what another strong point of the deck is. Making sure your hand is solid and you always have options to play. Uh, you don't want to be sort of, uh, or you don't want to have, I should say, a hand that really only has maybe four cards, and they're all sort of like high, t like, you know, Tyrannosaur, Murder, uh, Blacksmith, or Hassan Seagull. Like, that's maybe not what you want. You want to have a good hand, and that, again, is shown by the, uh, the amount of draw that we have in the deck. Forbidden City and Lumberjack. 
Uh, and even Flux too. Flux does have those uh, spell draws, which can or cannot be useful depending on what you pull. But again, that relies on the Flux's RNG. Again, that can be unpredictable. Uh, but yeah, a very solid deck. Um, pretty much, I think, when I was playing placements with this, um, I think I took 8 out of 10 last season and then followed up by a 5 out of 5 this season, getting it to 3,000. Um, so that's pretty much the deck list. Again, there's not really a whole lot. You actually get more out of this deck when watching the match of it. Um, there's not really much to say about the deck list. I mean, you've got a lot of big units. You've got supporting cards like Armory and Blacksmith. You've got the huge ramp. And again, the ramp is what you want, creating those big units. Um, something probably that I didn't mention was the Dwarven Scope, and I probably should because Dwarven Scope, man, if you are not using it in a pirate deck, you need to use this card. It is probably one of the better, better if not best pirate card out there right now for uh, some pretty strong reasons. I think the match will certainly show what Dwarven Scope can do. But enough talking from me for now about the deck. Let's take you guys right to the match and show you guys what the good stuff can do. Okay, so looking at our opening hand here, uh, we don't want to keep these two guys because we don't really have a nice way to ramp into them. So we're going to see what we can get. Forbidden City and the Blacksmith. Alright, that's a good sign. So we're going to throw out our Lumberjack here. Hopefully cycle out with something better. We do have the Forbidden City as well. Those three cards should come in handy. But we'll see how our opponent reacts. He is playing red-yellow. In my opinion, one of the stronger colors at the moment. But again, we'll see what happens. Uh, we do have Robins in our hand, which is interesting. He's going to be a big ramper later on when we start to get more uh, high-costing cars into our hand. Um, a Lumberjack as well. Not not the worst thing. Not the worst thing at all. Foil, though. I wonder why he's foiled. All right, so we actually have the Hassan City Guard, so we're going to see what we can get from the Lumberjack. Is there anything else that you're going to give us? Well, the draw. Vicious Sunflower. All right, so that's a pretty good defensive card, but right now we are just going to uh, press up a bit. We do have the Blacksmith in hand. So what I plan to do is hopefully, if he wants to throw something to body block, we throw out our Blacksmith. All right, he's got his own guards. And will he... All right. He'll just throw them out simply to defend. Not a big problem. Um, how do we... We'll probably just trade with the guards. So right now it's just... A Solid trading game back and forth right now. We'll throw out the Sunflower. We'll push it out more aggressively to see what he has. Um, I'm worried he's got a Knight of Flowers, though. That could be something that I don't want to see right now. Or he just bolts it. Bolting with the direct damage from Warlocks. Most likely the right play on his part. Um, let's throw out our Hassan City Guard. So that we don't lose them from the draw. And then we will draw three cards. We'll get the Knight of Flowers. Southward Captain. We want that in our hand. And we'll lose the Blacksmith. So unfortunately won't be able to take anything bigger that he throws out. Um, but uh, overall we got the Captain in our hand. Um, as I mentioned in the deck list. A very solid ramper. You're guaranteed that treasure too. Um, <laughs> flux. Hmm. Flux, flux, flux. Alright, let's see if we can tempt him here. We'll throw out a captain. We'll move both of our guards back. And we'll see if he takes the uh, the trade here. If he wants to sacrifice his flux for two draw. Or weaken my guy completely, get some face damage. I did leave myself kind of open for face damage. Um, and knowing that he's got warlocks, he is carrying burns. We saw from the blue fireball. But how much is he carrying? Okay, he's got the disintegrate. So that was a poor sort of judgment on my part. But we do have those two gold... Um, for the next turn, which we'll get six from our regular turn, and then plus two for eight, which means we can bring out Craxis next turn, and Craxis is going to help us draw. Um, okay, bleeding one to both of our guards. Not the smartest play. Uh, the guards, well, we don't really need them right now, but he doesn't know that. He thinks he's getting rid of one of our, uh, our only defense against Flux. But now that we have the ramp, we can bring out the Craxis, which will get us some draw. And of course, Flux's two attack won't really do much to the armor of Craxis. Um, the spells he got weren't that bad. Um, Nimble Retreat and, what was it, Blessing of the Trent? Okay, so we can't really take out our Craxis with what he's got on the board. We can tell because his, his, his mischievous imp blah, hit the castle, not Craxis. So 
no way the mischievous imp can take us out in its current form. I uh, don't know if he's got another burn for me, though. He's got a couple of spells, though, from Flux, some of which he didn't really use. A high dagger storm, again. Um, not going to kill me. It's not. Probably not going to draw next turn. He's got so many cards now. But, uh, you know, it's a good part of the deck, keeping your hand full of options. All right, Flamestorm. He'll kill the Craxus. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll give him that. Uh, let's get, let's get Pegacorn out in the field, followed by that Vicious Sunflower. So, knowing that he's got burns, he can't deal with the Pegacorn directly. He's, well, he, he's got to deal with it directly, in the sense that he must trade in a unit to me. Um, you know, can't rely on the burns here to help him, which, okay, trapped now. Can assume that's probably going to be a flame of eternity. Let's just ch uh, how do I want to check it? Yeah, let's do a dread pirate. Yep. Probably should have gone something cheaper. That's fine. We'll push up our flower here and leave our pegacorn where it is. We'll deal with the Taurus files when we get to it. There's no need to deal with it now. He can certainly Flamestorm it and draw two cards this turn. Not the biggest loss for us. My only question is what to do next. Because we have our Sunflower in position to get in castle damage range. So his Sunflower is probably the priority right now. At 8 gold, he can certainly do that. But I think it's de he's debating on... How does he want to proceed? Because if he's got a Kraxus, he can take it out. But we can then scope a uh, very powerful card here, our Pegacorn, and just instantly take him out without giving him any sort of draw. And then follow that up with maybe a Grendel uh, to just put the pressure on him further. He's going to respond with a Tyrannosaur. Okay. Again, not the worst thing. We're still probably going to end up scoping that. I think. Yeah. We'll, we'll, probably, we'll probably scope that. Or... We can get lucky with a uh, headless strike. Headless actually has a lot of options here. All right, let's throw. Yeah, headless. Where are you gonna hit? Beautiful tyrannosaur. Takes that down. Not a problem. Uh, we'll also throw our favorite little Grendel on the board, and then make a uh, threat here. So if he's got a flame storm, he's got to use it now. At this point, he's gonna take out the headless horseman. Uh, he'll throw out a Pegacorn of his own. Fair enough. Um, and then throw, yep, that's what I was a little afraid of. Blessing of the Trends goes on Pegacorn. Ooh, and then he's going to disintegrate our Headless. Not sure if he wanted to do that, though. Because we do have Robins, and what we can do here is if we trade our Grendel, we'll give him that extra buff, but then Robins comes out, pairing that with the scope, shoots him, and now we have five gold to use for ourselves. And we'll use that By putting another scope on Pegacorn, hitting the castle, and then drawing three additional cards. Oh, can I keep Barber's Return? Yes, I can. Beautiful. All right, so that was a great turn for us. Great turn. Um, he's working with five cards now. He's still got the potential to kill me. He, again, with Pegacorn, he's got to take me out with a, uh, a unit. Can't afford to burn him because I got the magic shield. He'll use a Forbidden City to get some cards in his hand. So he's got... Uh, I wasn't keeping track. Is that plus two more from his initial hand? I'm not keeping track. But we did certainly bring him down a notch. What is what is he going to do, though? That's the real question. He's got eight gold. There's room for a Kraxis, but he can't really kill anything. Flamestorm. Okay, so he'll get the uh, additional draw. From Taurus Files. Chaotic Storm. He's hoping to maybe snipe off the Robin. Doesn't do so. Brings Robins down to one. Will he kill it off again? 
Doesn't look like it. Oh, wait. No, he's going for a drain life play. Very nice. But Imp doesn't have enough stats. Does he have another Chaotic Storm? Nope. Does not. And that's our cue to sort of push here. We'll throw Headless. That hits the castle. Pegacorn takes out the Imp with the scope. We want to... Uh, we want to utilize the scope that we have in play here. We don't want to just, you know, if you if you have a choice between castle and unit with a scoped unit, always go for the unit because if you hit the unit, then that uh, with that, they're not going to be able to respond better to your scoped unit. So, scope. Very useful card. In addition, we'll probably throw out Knight of Flowers here. And then a Lumberjack as well. We're sort of diminishing our hand a little bit. So let's try to keep our hand sort of steady. We'll hold the Robins for now and the Scope for another time. I do hope that we get another draw soon though. Because I am looking a little bit worried. Although we are pressing the advantage pretty well here. Another Chaotic Storm. He's going to weaken the castle. Is he hoping to put the castle in burn Arbiter range? Because that would be a horrible way for me to lose this game. Nope, Jonviev comes out. Not going to do enough here. Jonviev needs some sort of buff. Because right now she's sitting at 3-3. Three, three, and that's not going to kill anything. Unless she's got help. I'm not sure how she's going to pull it off. Got three cards. Anything? No. Okay. So that was the uh, a well-fought battle. We definitely see that this deck can come out on top over the red-yellow uh, burn control. And we saw that scope a very valuable and useful card. You, it's, it's sort of highly valued in the pirate faction nowadays. People are learning to use scope more and more. And I think overall if more and more scope uh, is seeing play, it's going to become one of those bigger used and maybe more annoying cards depending on how your deck is equipped to counter. But overall, a great match to showcase the deck. And with that being said, let's move right into the outro. With that being said, guys, that's going to do it for the video today. If you guys did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like on the video, share with your friends, and comment down below your thoughts on the deck. Or if you want to use it for yourself and want to tell me how you're doing with the deck, of course, leave it in the comment section below. I want to hear what you guys have to say. And if you are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Share your support. Help us grow up the channel just by clicking that subscribe button. And yeah, that's pretty much all for me for now. So, until next time, guys, stay gaming.